Sasaki, Japan's Kiai knockout champion. When he lets rip with his vocal cords, you're going down. The body is approximately 70% water. Expression of Kiai causes ripples in this water. And it's what steals your opponent's energy. It's an instantaneous release of great power. There are 600 muscles in the human body. Most of these are related to breathing. Each muscle produces the sounds. This is what is used to knock over your opponent. Japan and China disagree about most things, and the energy of martial arts is a favorite bone of contention. So if you're starting to see parallels between Kiai and Chi, go and wash your mouth out. The Chinese concept of Chi is ambiguous. Kiai, as used by the Japanese, is an actual force. It's more concrete. In Japan, it was originally a secret esoteric samurai fighting skill. The man who taught this skill to Master Sasaki was able to kill small birds with his ki. And perhaps with those birds on his conscience, Master Sasaki restricts himself to two ki strikes on any one person at any one time. The risk of internal injury is just too great. These days, his ultimate test of power is ringing this temple bell with only his voice. A sort of Kiai duet. I don't think it is anything bad. 
really. I think um, it is one way of accommodating people so that they can come out clean in whatever they are doing. There are other paranormal phenomena which are even documented in the Bible, which defy the forces of gravity. This man, whose name is Ovaku, is an African shaman. And here we can see him preparing himself for a levitation. This will take place as soon as darkness begins to fall. The images which this film has recorded are scarcely to be credited. There are no hidden supports or pulleys to be seen. In spite of this, Ovaku actually rises off the ground and it seems as though he is floating on a cushion of air. The German commentator cannot believe his eyes. There is no question that this is a trick or an illusion. And he's absolutely convinced that he's witnessing a miraculous event and that the film is incontrovertible proof that levitation is indeed possible. A second cameraman can now be seen hurrying to the side so that he can get closer pictures of the fascinating event. Could it be that there are in fact invisible fields of force which this shaman is able to take advantage of? The shaman's breathing has become unusually fast and his face is contorted with the effort of the undertaking. Could the technique which we are witnessing here be the very same technique which is said to be practiced in India and in Tibet? Ovaku then suddenly drops back down to the ground like a stone. It seems as though the very same field of force which appeared to hold him up in the air has now been totally used up. The shaman is completely exhausted. Sangomas are wrongly referred to as witch doctors. This is not the case at all. A Sangoma has nothing to do with black magic apart from fighting. They are much respected within the community as psychologists, priests, and spiritual healers. They work with herbs, roots, snake skins, animal parts, and many other things. When one consults a Sangoma, it is the spiritual side that is investigated. A Sangoma can reveal the past 
look into the future and find lost objects and identify these if anything has been stolen by throwing bones while talking to his ancestors. Zulu culture prescribes to the belief that when a loved one passes on, his spirit continues to exist and guide the living. This spiritual existence is a power bestowed by God and therefore the living relatives often offer their obedience and respect to the guidance of the spirit of their ancestors. Ancestors can heal the sick, protect people from evil, and cure diseases that medical science cannot. The ancestor is also said to have the ability to bestow such healing powers to a chosen individual. They then train the individual to become a traditional healer, locally known as Sangoma. social and psychological problems which the healer tries to cure. The biggest difference between traditional and western medicine is that in traditional healing is a strong connection between the physical and spiritual beliefs. This integral way of viewing people and their individual problems is the main reason why the traditional healer will not die out even in the future. For the first time I thought it was almost like an aha experience. So here we have an explanation how healing, subtle energy healing really works. And even distant healing. They can be in any place, any time, faster than the speed of life. That, that explains it.